eye you have, if you, have, you switch on always to your natural eye, you will see things naturally. But if you switch on your spiritual eye, you will see beyond the spiritual, uh, beyond the natural into the supernatural. Amen. Amen. Today, I want to share with you on the, on the theme, a call to greatness. A call to greatness. A call to greatness. A call to greatness. From Webster's Dictionary, I found that greatness, to be great, is to be distinguished by rank, office, or power elevated, or to be dignified in aspect or manner. To be noble, that means you are great, if you are noble. In the Old Testament, the Bible makes mention of the word greatness or great many times. But I pick some two scriptures which talks about greatness from the Old Testament. Exodus chapter 11 verse 3. The Bible says that and Moses became great. He was great in the land of Egypt. That means he rose above the ordinary. In the book of Genesis chapter 12 verse 2, when God called Abraham, he said, I will bless you and I will make you great. Amen. And I will make your name great. So greatness is God who makes greatness. Who can make one to be great? Amen. So as we are sitting here in this year, never try to be famous. Never try to be great. Because it is God who makes one to be great. Amen. If you want God to make you great, you will be great. If you make yourself great, you will be nowhere. Amen. And a key to greatness is servanthood. A key to greatness is servanthood. Jesus said in the book of Matthew chapter 20, Any one of you who wants to become great must be a servant. Hallelujah. If you are a servant, then God can raise you to be great. If you humble yourself, the Lord will exalt you. But if you try to exalt yourself, the Lord will break you down. A call to greatness. Open your Bible with me to the book of Joshua, chapter 1. But before we read Joshua, chapter 1, before we read, I want you to uh, listen to the background. When God called Moses to go and deliver the people of Israel from the Egyptian bondage, Moses said he doesn't know how to talk. Even though God promised him, I will be with you and I will help you to do the task I have ahead of you. But Moses said, I have never, ever been eloquent. I don't know how to talk. So please, God, it's better you send somebody to do that. And God said, okay, I'm going to send your brother Aaron, the Levite. He's even on the way. Why? Because God even knew that Moses was going to give excuses and was going to undermine himself, undermine his capability by the power of God to go and do that work. So when he requested God to send somebody else. God said, I'll send Aaron with you. And Aaron will be your spokesperson. So if you look at it, it is Moses God is sending. But it is Aaron to be his spokesperson. That means Aaron will only speak what Moses tells him to speak. Amen. So in one way or the other, it is like Aaron going to assist Moses to deliver the people, to deliver his message. Because he himself has undermined himself that he is not eloquent. The people will not listen to him. When he is talking, nobody can hear him. But how can Aaron hear him and <laughs> speak his word, his message? Okay. We see that as God was with Moses, in his administration, Moses had three people. One Aaron. We have somebody called Nadab, and there was another person, Abihu. 
these people were very close to Moses. Even in the book of Genesis 27, Exodus 27, when Moses was going to the Mount uh, Sinai to take the Ten Commandments, these people were with Moses. But we find also that there was somebody who appeared on the scene. In Exodus chapter 17, the Bible says that when Amalekites, Amalekites were coming to attack the Israelites, Moses said to Joshua, organize some men who can go to the battle, lead them and go and fight the Amalekites. And I will be on top of the uh, mountain and I will take the rod of God in my hands and I will lift my hands and God will be with you. And the Bible says that he did that. Joshua organized the army. They went and fought. So we have seen that Joshua appeared. That was the first time Joshua appeared on the scene. Moses told him, organize men to go and fight. And Joshua obeyed. But in Exodus 24, we find that Joshua was a servant of Moses. He was Moses' servant. Serving Moses. In other words, he was his personal aide or his personal assistant. And he has been with Moses for quite a long time. Since his youth, if you study the Bible, that says, since his youth, he has been a servant to Moses. Now, I want you to have the picture that Moses having some elders, 70 elders of Israel with him. And among the 70 elders, he always have Nadab, Abihu, and Aaron with him. But now, look here. When Moses went to the mountain, he has leaders with him. But here is the case. Aaron, who was supposed to be a spokesperson, leading the people with a Moses. When the people requested that Moses has kept long, just collect our earrings and make us some God that we can worship. Now we don't know the God that we are worshiping. Moses is gone. Moses is not come back, coming back. Aaron just obeyed the people and he collected the earrings or the jewelries of the people and made the golden calf for the people to worship. I want you to look, have the photo or the video on your mind. How a leader, being with a leader, lost focus. Why? Because when God called Moses, he gave Moses the vision. And Moses had to chart his course towards the vision. Because Aaron did not see the vision and failed to, to, to follow the vision of Moses. He is now being directed. The leader is being, being led by the people instead of the people leading the, uh, the, the leader leading the people. Now the people leading the leader. Let's go straight to the book of Joshua chapter 1. Joshua 1. From verse 1, we are reading up to verse 9. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all the people, these people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that you set, every place that the sole of your feet, of your foot, will tread upon, I have given to you. As I said to Moses, from the wilderness and the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Ephrates, all the land of the Hittites and the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will go, I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For to these people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their forefathers to give them. 
Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all that the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand nor or to the left hand, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is right, that is written in it, sorry, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says that Moses is dead, and God is calling Joshua. But before then, God himself chose Joshua. Why God did not choose Aaron? Even though this time Aaron had died, Aaron had already died. Why God didn't choose Abihu? Why God didn't choose uh, uh, Nadab? He did not choose any of the 70 elders, but he chose Joshua. Calling Joshua to come and succeed Moses. Joshua was a servant of Moses. And now God is elevating him. God is promoting him to take the position of Moses to lead the people of Israel to go and inherit the land God promised to give them. Amen. I'm talking on the theme, A Call to Greatness. The Bible says that Joshua was Moses' assistant. That is the King James Version uh, translates Joshua to be the assistant. And the Old Testament, Greek Old Testament version of this verse says that the assistant is not assistant being in position to him, next to him. But it means being a worker under him. Taking instruction, taking command from Moses. He has served him, probably washing his feet, polishing his shoes, holding his bag. The Bible makes us understand that when Moses was going to the mountain to take the Ten Commandments, Joshua was with him halfway. And he has to wait for Moses to go to the presence of God and meet God. Joshua did not complain. I am your assistant. Why didn't I go to the presence of God with you? Why can't I go? Why should I wait here? The guy has to obey. And when Moses was returning, he was with him. And Joshua was the one who heard the noise going on in the camp. And he said, there is a noise going on down there. And Moses said, this noise I hear is not a noise, it's not a joyful noise. It is not a noise of victory, neither nor a noise of defeat. Something bad is going on down there. Joshua was a servant with Moses, serving Moses, humbling himself, taking instructions, just obeying, giving respect and honor to Moses, a call to greatness. Jesus said, anyone who wants to be great must be like this little boy. You know how children don't complain? The little ones, not the, those who have reached the adolescent age, who can give excuses and complain. Most, Moses was the boss. Joshua was the servant. He humbled himself. He said, why? God didn't choose anyone. He chose Moses and uh, Joshua. One is that he has learned from Moses. He has been with the man. He knows the doctrine Moses teaches the people. And God was referring him that the commandments, the laws that Moses, my servant, gave you, 
Make sure that you teach the people the same way. He said, do not let it depart from your mouth. Don't close your mouth on it. But rather, speak. Speak it. Meditate upon it. Amen. So, why was Joshua chosen? Because Joshua was approved by God himself. Somebody could quickly, you can quickly open to the book of, uh, the book of uh, Numbers chapter 27. Numbers 27, quickly. Numbers 27. It is God himself who chose him. Numbers 27. Numbers 27. Numbers 27. God, Moses prayed to God because God said to Moses, you are going to die. You cannot reach the land. You can't get to Canaan. Your eyes, I want you to go and see it. Climb the mountain and have a picture of Canaan. And when Moses looked and God told him that he will not get to the land. You know what happened? Some leaders are jealous that somebody will come and take over. But Moses prayed to God that God, if I cannot go, you know what? He did not argue with God at all. And said, God, why can't I go? Please forgive me. You know, when I sinned by striking the, uh, the, 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 the rock with the rod three times, I know I erred against you. But I pleaded with you to forgive me. So why can't, can't I continue the journey? 